Hello, everybody. It's me, Roscoe, and welcome to another edition of the Kings of Anglia Fan Social, the show where the Koi Army share their thoughts on all things town. And it's not been a good start. We've already lost one of my guests. <laughs> um, but hopefully, Jake will be with us shortly. Um, but yeah, four, four cup finals to go, ladies and gentlemen. We're live on all platforms once again on the Facebooks, on the YouTubes, on the Twitter. Uh, thanks again for all of you joining us. I'm sure you're all going to join us throughout this hour or so chat. And um, I'm joined by two Davidsons. Uh, Jake will join us in a second. But let's bring in Callum, first of all, the man who uh, is a budding journalist himself. Uh, mm-hmm. How are you doing, my friend? Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, pleasure to be on. <clears throat> Long overdue, I feel. Yep. Uh, but uh, yeah, but, uh, pleased to be on. Hope, you, hope you're all well, Ross. I'm very well, my friend. Thank you very much for asking. No, no one asked, no one asked me that. <laughs> so um, thanks for asking. Uh, we're going to quickly... Go back to you, kind of a second, but let's bring Jake in, who disappeared during my intro. He's went, oh, I've had enough of Ross already. But how are you doing, my friend? <laughs> He's frozen already. Okay, we'll go back to you, Callum, then. Let's <laughs> talk about um, your Itchy Town fandom, just to do a little introduction to yourself. Um, obviously, you're on here because you're a Town fan, but uh, how do you start becoming a Town fan? And Jake's back, but we'll, we'll go to Jake in a second. Uh, well, I've been a Town fan pretty much all my life. Um since I moved to the area when I was fairly young, six or seven. Um, I'm 21 now, so probably 14, 15 years. Um, finally seeing some decent football um, after all that time, which is nice. Uh, and I'm sure there's many other people in the same boat. Uh, but yeah, that's um, kind of where it all started. Um, 2010 was my first game, January. That famous Pablo Cunago winner against Coventry. Was, uh, was uh was my first game so it wasn't, wasn't a bad one to go to um and uh of, well you can imagine from from the way that that game went i was i was i've been hooked ever since yeah and sadly you've had a lot of rubbish <laughs> as you <laughs> mentioned uh, at least this last past year or so it's been some good stuff so that's good to hear uh let's bring jake in you're here my friend great post behind you by the way jaws uh yeah how, how's things and uh yeah welcome to the show yeah good um, long time no speak, and hopefully, um, hopefully my internet calms down, so um, I stay in it for more than thirty seconds. I like it, my friend. And um, if you don't know, ladies and gentlemen, people on the curtain sort of thing here. Me and Jake have gone back a long time in terms of doing Itchwich Town content. If you uh, watched us and listened to us back in the day, Itchwich Town Talk, we did a, a podcast on IO Radio. Uh, Jake was one of our one of the pundits, you can sort of say, before Gary Neville and Sir Co. Jake was there bringing some great stuff. Um, yeah, that was, uh, those are the days, mate. Obviously, you know, some bad games, but some, you know, some memorable moments as well. That was Mick McCarthy days as well. Yeah, definitely. I'd say I was more like a, like a Paul Merson, just like struggling to pronounce people's names and, and given strange analogies <laughs> and things like that. But um, I definitely missed doing that. It was a great podcast and um, fortunately um, we got, like better things to talk about now than we did on that. Yeah, there was some bad times. And uh, we actually, of course, mate, we played two charity matches as well. Uh, the Itchy's Town Talk team taking on the Itchy's Town Women's team, uh, which, of course, was um, for a fundraiser, obviously, for Suffolk Mine, a good charity event. Uh, one was at Eden Market and one was at Felixstowe, uh, which was two great events. And I think you scored in one of those games, I think, didn't you, Jake? First one, which we somehow lost 8-7 or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I, I want to say I scored two or three. Yeah. Um, my friends will bat me, but I quite often when trying to pull up the highlights on YouTube and just go, yeah, this this is how good I was, and now I'm six years older, six stone fatter, and <laughs> can't move like that anymore. Yeah, well, that, they were great. Yeah, yeah, you can actually find those highlights actually on on YouTube. I think if you just put Itchy Town Talk versus Itchy Town women's team you can, you can find it but um if, if i can quickly find it we'll, we'll share it in the chat and you can watch us play uh yeah an absolute thriller down at needham market but uh yeah it's uh it was a great time and yeah it's just town talk um still lives on with us but of course we're here with the kings of anglia fan social and we've got a lot to talk about boys as i said in the intro four cup finals to go and um before we get started in terms of the last two results which weren't great but uh, Kieran McKenna has won Manager of the Month for March. Um, obviously, it was a month where we did lose one game. We lost, of course, against Cardiff. Two late goals. 
still trying to get over that, ladies and gentlemen. But of course, we, we score six against for Wednesday, 2 0 win away at Plymouth, which is a hard place to go. Of course, a late winner against Bristol City to get a win. And of course, a very tough game in Lancashire when we beat Blackburn 1 0. But uh, Callum, yeah, um, Kieran McKenna, when a manager a month, I don't know how many times he's won it now. I think he's won it a few times uh, over his tenure. I think, of course, he won a few times in League One, but uh, well deserved. Yeah, you'd like to think so. Um, not sure how many times he won it in League One. Certainly his second this season, won it in September in the Championship. But but yeah, you'd like to think, <clears throat> excuse me, that it was fairly fairly deserved. Four wins from five, included a 6-0 in there, which is going to boost your, your credit quite a lot. Um and some some memorable some some memorable moments from those from those games as well, in, including the Cardiff game, which is memorable for for the wrong reasons. But that was the only the only slip up there. Uh, four four big wins that's got us to where we are at the moment. Obviously, we were top of the league as well in some of those games. So uh, I think this world itself just looks yeah. It, twice is now of course Championship Manager Month, and then it was twice in League One, uh, March twenty twenty three and April twenty twenty three. Obviously, because of the <laughs> <laughs> Amazing run we went on yeah. last season. Uh, what one thing I like, Jake, uh, obviously, was that the picture he, he done with the, the, all the staff. It wasn't just like the, the coaching staff; it was everyone who works at the training ground. Which there's was, was a lot of people, and it proves how much goes on behind the scenes and how much you know how many staff there is to, to help out catering. I think even just cleaning, just just all what, all together. Yeah, you see, um, you see quite a few of those now, don't you? I think you get like, to, especially at, like the start of the season, you don't see so many. But as you go through the season, and Jake's gone again. That's not good. That's not good. He was saying some good stuff there, Callum. But uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get Jake hopefully back in a second, ladies and gentlemen. It's just it's, it's live, live, live TV. Anything can happen. Um, but yeah, Callum, I think that's great to see, though. I know that I know as Jake was saying there. You know, it's ha- it happens a lot now with a lot of clubs. They, they want to make sure they sort of give praise to everyone who, you know, is part of this journey. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just good to see. Yeah, it does happen a lot. And I'm not sure whether at other clubs it might be somewhat of a token gesture, that sort of thing. But certainly isn't the case uh, here. You know, I mean, spoke in the press conference today about how individual awards like Manager of the Month don't happen without the whole team around him. Um you know that the players, the work that goes on at, at the training ground, uh, it is one big group, one big collective um, that culminates in one one man winning the award, um, and, it, and, it, and it's good to see everyone get the get the recognition for that. Um, but of course, Kieran himself has to take a lot of credit for that. Um, but you know, he's he's, he's a very humble man, um, and uh, he likes to he likes to share the praise. Indeed. Jake, come back in, my friend. Continue what you were saying. Um, I think in the uh, manager of the month, September, I think the picture is of him and his entire coaching staff. So it's kind of only right that the the, um, the next step is that he involves everyone who works on kind of, I guess it's kind of the performance side when you chuck in catering and stuff like that. I noticed um, some of our media friends aren't in it. So it's... Um, I guess it's everyone who, you know, does that performance side of the job at Playford Road. Makes you think Playford Road is going to sink the amount of people that must work up there. <laughs> there's so many. There's so many. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be worried about trying to get make sure everyone's in it. You know, trying to, as a photographer, that, that's my worst nightmare. Uh, when you've got too many faces, too many bodies, you're like, oh, I want to make sure no one's eyes are closed. I want to make sure no one's like, yeah, you want the tall people at the back. Yeah, that's just been my worst nightmare. I think I'm happy with like three or four, but that was at least like 20 plus people. That's what I felt like anyway. Maybe even more than that. I'll have to count count them all. But uh, but no, big congratulations to Kieran McKenna for the Manager of the Month Award for March. Will he get it April? We shall wait and see. Probably not because we've you know not had a good start. <laughs> that segues nicely <laughs> into the last two result, boys. Um, haven't scored, haven't won. Um, obviously won the feat. I won't mention it. We lost two because we, we all know. Uh, then also, oh, Jake is on the move. I'm moving just to see if I can get better internet. I like this. I like this. <laughs> a little tour round of Jake's place here. Love this. Love this. Uh, I'm not sure how safe my room is actually for broadcast. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. But uh, that's good. You're on the move. But um, but yeah, Callum, as Jake sets up in his new location, uh, 
yeah, thoughts on the last two results and what I've, I've done this as the three words or less feature. Uh, how would you sort of, yeah, share your thoughts on the last two results? No goals for town either. No, like you're saying, no, no, no goals across two games is a is is a strange feeling. Um, we seem to score score for fun so far this season. So no goals in two games does feel a bit a bit strange. But the word the words I've gone for is it, uh, it's, it's a missed opportunity um, in the sense that across both both of those games last weekend and midweek, some other results towards the top end of the league have gone our way which which goes to show which goes to show that perhaps the getting one point from the last two games isn't a disaster because it's still in our hands remarkably um but at the same time it is a missed opportunity because especially with on Wednesday night with Leeds and Leicester both playing beforehand we knew that if we'd won we'd have gone top and we'd have gone uh three three points clear of leads um but it wasn't to be but i didn't think the performance on wednesday night especially in the first half i don't think was bad um i thought watford came with a game plan and i thought they i thought they defended well to their credit um and i think they came for a point and they got what they came for to be honest um so it was, it was a frustrating one but you know there's there's not a lot of time to to look back on it because we've got another big one tomorrow. Yeah, quick turnaround. These games come thick and fast, although now we've got a two-week <laughs> break. So uh, after Borough, it's two weeks off. And yeah, we've then got, of course, three big games to go. But yeah, Jake, what's your, your overall thoughts on the last two results? Um, obviously, one hurts a bit more than the other. But um, yeah, Porton Road, we're not seeing many games that have not scored. Oh, he's gone again. <laughs> Callum, uh, well, can continue to be with you. Um, yeah, I'm going to bring up Charlie here. Obviously, we created so many chances, didn't we? We just didn't finish them. Uh, Jake is back, though, so I'm actually going to go back to Jake. Come in, my friend. Um, yeah, what's your sort of three words or less to yeah, share your thoughts on the last two games? I guess um, flat and underwhelming would be my three words. Um, you know, they're not... Norwich game is what it is. Everyone discussed that there. I think the Watford one, um, I, I sort of said to my friends, I think that's a good point on the face of it. Um, a game in which we've played okay, but not amazing against a side that have got the capability to beat us. And we've not lost and we've not really conceded any chances. Uh, kind of a, a fluke from the halfway line. Um, I think you look back on that at the end of the season, hopefully, and, and we'll call that a good point. Um, but yeah, we move on now to the, to the four cup finals. Yeah. Four cup finals indeed. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about from the Watford game? Cause this obviously will not have a flagship show. Anything you want to sort of bring up um, from that game? Of course there was four changes, obviously a team boys. I'm going to bring a Mick McCarthy phrase here. They, they were goosed, weren't they? Very much goose Callum. Um, yeah. Obviously, Porton Road is always, you know, it's rocket or it's been packed stadiums, you know, packed Porton Road all season. But um, obviously the players just looked absolutely knackered. Yeah, that's what I was, I was going to mention that about how how tired some of the players look, particularly, I think Kiefer Moore particularly has looked really tired since, probably really since the international break when he played 120 minutes for Wales um, just before the Blackburn game. And he hasn't really had a rest. He's, play, he's played in all five, hasn't he? It, despite coming through that back strain that we thought was going to keep him out of the derby, but he ended up playing. Whether or not that proved to be a good thing in hindsight, who knows? Um, but yeah, so I think I think the break after tomorrow, I think I think will come at a good time um, for, for for Kiefer in particular because um, I, I think his tiredness has been pretty clear. Um, and I think the fact that we haven't scored in the last two games probably goes some way to suggesting that. And Jake, to be fair, I think we should have, could have been up, <clears throat> two up, three, maybe three up in, in the first half against Watford if we, you know, took those chances. Of course, Brody hit the post of the Kiefer Moore with his header, which Kiefer made a good save. But um, yeah, we just weren't clinical enough. Yeah, and I think it is one of those things when when you go back and and weigh up the luck over the course of the season. I think, you know, we definitely have had elements of that throughout the season. And I know you earn your luck, but 
Watford's one of those games where we just didn't get quite quite get the luck. And like on another day, that that broadhead goal bounces in off the post, um, and or he's not in the way of Jack Taylor. The save from the Kiefer Moore header is is a is a great save. Um, and I think it's just one of those games where you have to say, yeah, we I don't I don't think the second half was great. No, it wasn't great, Jake. It wasn't great, and he's gone again. Um, <laughs> But uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. He'll be I'll, back. He'll be back. He'll be back. Don't worry, later, man. This is the, the fun and games we have on the fan social live on Friday. Um, I want to give a shout out to Bono, even and gents. Hope hope everyone has had a good week. I've had a good week. It's been a productive week. Obviously, you know, been busy, um, but always always good, which is good to see. Um, but yeah, Callum, uh, we're gonna we're gonna segue on to the four cup finals shortly. Um, but any other business from the Watford game? Um, obviously as you mentioned, a missed opportunity because, yeah, we could have gone top of the table and a few points ahead of uh, Leeds and Leicester because they dropped points. Yeah, I, I think we've covered 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 everything, to be honest, from the Watford game. But I do, like Jake said, I think if one of those chances in the first half goes in, Broadhead doesn't hit the post or the keeper doesn't make a great save from Moore's header and we, we, we get a goal in the first half, could be a completely different game, and we could we could be sat here tonight talking while we're top of the league. But um, but it's not to be. Um, but we're still four games to go, and if we win all four, which is a stretch, but if we win all four, then we'll be in the Premier League. Um, so it's uh, it's certainly not a bad position to be in in uh, early mid April. Yeah, very true, and we shall see. Uh, I think Jake is back. Let's bring him back in. No, he's not. Got black screen of death. Or is he here? Is he here? I think he is here. Yeah. There we go. Um, he's I'm just, just the box. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. Let's see if that, this works. Let's see how it goes. Well, we'll keep, we'll keep you, Jake, as we've got you still. And um, let's bring into then the four cup finals to go, ladies and gentlemen, because, uh, yeah, they don't get any easier. You know, obviously, Borough this weekend – then Hull City, Coventry City away. And then obviously we finish the season at home against Huddersfield Town, who are obviously fighting down there in the relegation zone. But uh, how are you feeling about it, Jake? Can't, it's hard to predict, isn't it? But I'm going to get you to predict it. How do you think it's going to help? How is it all going to pan out? Well, I think first of all, I'm looking forward to playing teams that want to win the game. I think that's something that as a town fan, we've probably learned to deal with over the the last 18 months is constantly playing games against inferior opposition that are happy with a point. So that's the first thing is I'm looking forward to playing four teams that want to win as well. So I, I think it, a lot hinges on tomorrow without, without putting too much pressure on it. I think three points tomorrow and people will really start to believe. And, and then we know going into those last three, what we need to get over the line. Um, if tomorrow doesn't go. And he's gone again. So, Callum, come in, my friends. Uh, four big games to go. And as Jake was saying there, because um, sometimes when you play this top, this part of the season, it, some, you've got teams you know, on the beach, nothing to play for. Uh, and actually, sometimes that's good because you can easily thrash them. Uh, but there's some teams that you know can go on and you know they can actually spoil the party. But uh, how are you feeling for these four big games to go? Yeah, well, the final three going into the final week are obviously a couple of weeks away and there's a lot lot of games to be played by the other two between now and then. But in terms of tomorrow, I think tomorrow will suit us far more than Wednesday night will. Um, just because Watford, under the new manager, have been looking difficult to beat. I mean, they still haven't lost under Cleverly. They've been looking far more difficult to beat. Um sort of defending stru defending in a good structure, that sort of thing. Whereas Middlesbrough, while they're highly unlikely to sneak into the playoffs, there's still that slim chance and they've got they've got to win all four to do that and hope other results go their way. So they can't afford to come to Portman Road tomorrow and and play in a similar way to how Watford did on Wednesday, I don't think. Um and I think those games suit us suit us better when teams want to want to come at us and engage in a football match. And I think if they do that, I, I I'm pretty confident that that, that, that we'll be able to um 
that we'll be able to get some goals in us and uh, and hopefully get a get a better result. Yeah, obviously, I think the Watford game, even though they haven't got really much to play for Watford, but I think they've also got an interim head coach. Obviously, there's probably some players who are you know probably wanting to earn a new contract, maybe. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was always it's still going to be a tough game, and obviously they had a good run as well going into this one. I think he's still unbeaten. Tom Cleverley mm-hmm. as manager, so th- th- yeah, it's always hard to predict these games coming in. We've got Jake back in. I've told him the door on his phone, and do you know what? You look you look more more handsome now, Jake, with your, <laughs> your phone. So I'm not saying you weren't before, but we can now really see you. So maybe this maybe this is the the answer this whole time. So um, we shall see how we get on. But um, let's segue though, boys. I want to ask you the big question. Um, and I actually haven't put it on the thing, but are we getting promoted? I'm t- I'm doing it now. Boys, Jake, what do you reckon? Four games to go. Do you think we'll, if we win all four, we're up? Yeah, um, I'm going to go for a second place promotion. Again, back to back. Yeah, I um, think we'll win tomorrow. Draw with, I can't remember the order. I think we'll win tomorrow, beat Hull, draw with Coventry, beat Huddersfield. Okay, then you've got hope. You, you think then Leeds will just drop off? Yeah, I think the South, we're, we're all going to have to be Southampton fans at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to go off. Oh, dearie me. It's, it's great though, it's fun, isn't it? Because you think like a couple of years ago, we were playing dead rubbers. I was, I, that was my favourite phrase. I think uh, when, <laughs> or, when sadly, when Kieran McKenna, you know, when he first came in, it was like, yeah, we, we were dead rubbers. And that was just my phrase I was using all the time. Oh, dead are dead rubbers. But now, four big games, Callum. Same question to you. Do you think Town going to do it? What's your predictions over those four games? It's so difficult to call, isn't it? Um, with so few games left and such close points tallies. But I'll go with my heart and say yes. Um, like Jake, I think I, 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 I can see I can see us getting ten points. Um, I can see us winning tomorrow. I can see us winning on the final day, and I can see the Hull and Coventry games. I can see us winning one of them and maybe drawing the other. Which, which way round? I'm not sure. Um, but I, I, I think ten points will get us over the line because Le- Leeds would have to win all four for that not to be the case. Um, and I, I can see Leeds getting nine, nine or ten. But if we get if we get ten, that 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 would be enough. So um, so yeah, we'll we'll, we'll go with that. Why, we'll, we'll say concern, yes. Okay, I like that. Why my one concern though, boys, is goal difference. I've been saying that for the last few weeks because you know we've improved. You know, obviously thanks to that six 0 win, but we've currently got goal difference of thirty two, and Leeds have got forty three. Leicester have got forty two. Jake, do you think that could, you know, be a, be a factor going into that maybe final game of the season? Yeah, it, it's definitely not great when things are so tight because it it effectively becomes an extra point, doesn't it, for the other teams? Um, I don't think it's the kind of deficit we're going to be able to make up in the meantime, especially with the fixtures we've got. Um, so we just have to hope and pray that it doesn't come down to to that deciding the promotion. Yeah, hopefully we okay. can. I guess, I guess, interestingly, I don't know if any of you follow Kieran Maguire, who does the Price of Football podcast. Uh, the EFL have released a statement today around Leicester and their financial performance. And um, it looks as if the EFL tried to put a points deduction on them and were basically told that that was unlawful. And they're, Leicester are now threatening the EFL with legal action. So um, I don't think we're going to get anything... Um, any of the democracy is going to help us get promoted at this point either. <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely not. But yeah, it's such, such interesting. It's always interesting, that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, we shall see what happens, boys. Uh, as we said, four cup finals. That one more time, Ross. That one more time. Um, but I want to quickly um, talk about a certain player, maybe certain players that could return for this uh, these final few games. Obviously, George Hurst, Wes Burns. Obviously, George Hurst has been a, you know, a, a missing player, isn't he? It's been a big miss since he got injured in that Leicester game on Boxing Day, which is mad to think, you know, that's how long he's been out for. Um, and yeah, how, how big of a miss, you know, has he been, Callum? Because obviously, yeah, we brought Keith Moore in and obviously had a great, great sort of start. Um, but obviously, you know, he wasn't playing many games for Bournemouth. So I think maybe these, these last few weeks have maybe caught up to him a little bit. Yeah, I, I think he's been a big miss. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of George Hurst. Um, 
I think the way that we play, or at least try and play, or did while he was in the side while he was fit, we we, we play a, sort of around him so well, and he brings he brings so much more to the team than than just his goals. I think he got six goals and six assists. I think it was before he got injured. Um, but I just think he brings so much to the team. And when he when he did get injured, obviously we then had about a month before Kiefer came in. Um, during that time, I mean, the immediate time after Christmas, we drew it home to QPR and drew at Stoke, nil-nil. I think if 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 George Hurst was fit or, or Kiefer had been in the door by then, obviously both of those were before the window opened, but had we had one of those two up front, we probably wouldn't have drawn, certainly not both games, possibly not either of them. Um which is a shame, but obviously all teams have injuries, don't they? So um, it's something that we had to we had to deal with, and I thought we dealt I thought we dealt with it well in January, getting Kiefer Moore in. But I think I think the last couple of games have just caught up with with, with Kiefer in terms of fitness wise. Um, so I think the break will do him some good, but also the squad some good, um, and and, may, and maybe George Hurst can have a role to play. In the final week of the season, oh, we shall see, Jay. That would be a massive boost, wouldn't it, for the for the whole team and just for us as well, having that far power back as well. Yeah, I, you know he's huge. Like Callum, I'm, I'm a massive George Hurst fan, and I think you know to look at him quite sort of analytically, he's um he's six foot three, something like that, quick, good with back to goal, can finish, and I think you look at the Premier League, like what they pay for strikers that can can deliver those kind of attributes um you know he's going to be worth a lot of money at some point you look at and you look at people like ollie watkins who's you know all right better than george hurst right now but has a lot of those kind of attributes and he's lingering around the england team and and scored you know one of the you know he's one of the highest scorers in the premier league this season um i think hurst trajectory is is huge and um having him back will be massive and, and wes burns yeah, I mean, look at the Bristol City game in that run, which has got Kieran McKenna manager of the month. When he comes on in that Bristol City game, um, it changes completely, doesn't it? Because they've been dealing with Amari Hutchinson uh, coming towards the ball all game, and then and then suddenly the poor left backs chopping Burns down a couple, like two or three <laughs> times in five minutes, isn't he? And um, you know, but Burns is massive. I think we saw a little bit of that from Jackson in the in the Watford game, just having that pace back on the right hand side, but. He's just not quite Wes Burns, is he? No, unfortunately not with his crosses and stuff like that. But uh, he does a shift, doesn't he? He does a shift, Caden. But um, but yeah, we shall see if they're back for those um, final three games. We shall see. Um, now, next feature, we're going to sort of segue to a bit more retro stuff. We are now segueing as we got to the halfway point. To, uh, we've got the strike in a short mile. But I, I want to quickly mention a bit of a an On This Day feature that was yesterday. And uh, Connor Wickham made his uh, Tisha Town debut 15 years ago, ladies and gentlemen, which is mad, I think, <laughs> but become the youngest ever Tisha Town debutant at 16 years and 11 days old. And I just thought it'd be nice to sort of just sort of mention that, but also get Callum, Jake and all your guys' thoughts watching. Um, do you think that will ever be broken? Because that is a, a big feat, you know, 16 years of age, 11 days old. Um, I'm also going to ask you what you were doing when you were 16 years <laughs> old. Well, but yeah, Callum, do you reckon that will ever be broken? It's difficult to say, isn't it? Um, I think the trajectory that football's going at the moment, you're seeing a lot more extremely young players coming through. So I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's impossible, but I I, I would say it's unlikely because 16 years and 11 days is remarkably young for a first team for a first team player. Um, so. I, I can't see it happening anytime soon, but you know, for all I know, we could have a eleven-year-old in the academy that's a wonder kid that in th in, th in three four years' time will be coming on at fifteen. So maybe. <laughs> and uh, of course, he was making his debut in the championship, so it's not like once again there's been a few debuts where it's just like maybe like ten minutes here and there or five minutes or whatever, because uh, of course we had a lot of debutants in the Pizza Trophy in League One, and even though yeah, okay, they were competitive games to an extent, but they weren't like proper like. 
championship fixtures because he was playing, it was against Doncaster and we lost that game 3 1. So it wasn't a, a memorable day in terms of, of a win. It was at Portman Road uh, in the championship. Jim and Jill, of course, gave him his debut. Uh, but yeah, Jake, do you think it could ever happen? Obviously, yeah, 16 years of age, 11 days old, which, you know, you've seen, of course, a lot of 16 year olds obviously scored, you know, played in the Premier League, scored in the Premier League. Of course, Wayne Rooney's one of those that like, was very young when he made his debut as well. Yeah, yeah, I think you have to be one of two things. Don't you? you have to be extremely physically developed, which Connor Wickham obviously was, um, or, you, or you're the opposite and you're incredibly technically gifted. Um, I'm trying to think of like recent ones, you know, not ex- not including town. Like um, Harvey Elliott was, I think he was ridiculously young when Fulham started playing him. Um but yeah, sixteen years and eleven days is it, you're gonna, really going to have to go some to beat that, I would imagine, and have the right manager in place yes. to, to want to do it. Yeah, because once again, I think like Arsenal, they'd, they've had a few fifteen-year-olds, haven't they, on the bench and stuff like that. But once again, you could be on the bench, and that's great experience, I think, for any any player, even be on the bench and not even play, like be around the, the first team squad. I know there's been a few young lads been training with Kieran McKenna's side, but. I don't think they'll ever been close to, you know, being on the bench and making their debut. But, uh, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see if that record can be broken. Um, but, yeah, Callum, what were you doing at 16 years of age, my friend? Uh, well, I was, this would have been five years ago. I was I was watching us get get relegated to League One um, that year. So, um, yeah, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a great year footballing-wise. Um, yeah, I was like any other 16-year-old, I suppose. I was doing my or just finish my GCSEs, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I certainly wasn't certainly wasn't playing for Ipswich Town, which I'd have uh, which I'd have certainly loved and still would love. Um, but I think uh, I think that's probably unlikely. To be fair, I think uh, Paul Lambert should have been calling up Jake if he was uh, the sixteen year old back then, maybe. But uh, how how old were you um, back in the relegation season, Jake? Sorry to bring you bring you get your age up here. Um... I think I was post university. I was, I was probably about 22, 23 in that relegation season when we were doing the podcast. Um, at 16, um, was 2011. I had a, I had a Blackberry mobile phone. <laughs> um, that's how long ago that was. Cause I, I'm not even sure if Blackberry still exists anymore. I think they do. No. Um, yeah. GCSEs. It's probably around the time that I, kind of discovered alcohol and uh, i was i was probably out most weekends as a 16 year old drinking in in parks and at house parties and things like that um and playing yeah playing a lot of football yeah yeah pretty much so me and yeah playing call of duty and uh playing you know just yeah not doing stuff you do as a teenager but not like connor wickham at 16 years of age 11 days saying that again making his debut for Richards Town, which is mad. But um, but yeah, for that, I'll bring that up, ladies and gentlemen. 15 years ago, yesterday, he made his Richards Town debut. Still the youngest ever. Dableton, will it be broken? We shall see. We, we'll, we'll do a podcast on it if that does ever happen. Okay. But there we go. Well, it's tell time, tell a little pause, and uh, do the strike. Five questions, plus okay. tiebreaker as always. Callum and Jake to go head-to-head, who will be crowned the strike champion this week. Um and yeah, we've got a mixture of questions. I think that I think you all know these players in terms of you know growing up watching them. Maybe the first one you'll know who it is, but maybe kind of <laughs> maybe a bit right, maybe too young to see him play. But uh, question one is on a, a town legend, um, Captain Fantastic, Matty Holland. Obviously turned fifty yesterday. Uh, doesn't look fifty. He still looks like he played, you know, when he played basically. And we, we jokingly say he's a vampire because he just doesn't age. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Matt Holland's happy 50th birthday from yesterday. But how many goals did Matt Holland score for town in 314 games? So there's no options here. You have to just guess. And if you get it bang on, you get two points because um, that's what I do. That's what I do. So yeah, if you get bang on, you get two points. If you get closest to the correct answer, obviously you get a point. Obviously, ladies and gentlemen, play at home. 177 People are joining us live right now. So good to see you all. Thanks for joining us for another fan social. Um, if you're watching or uh, listening another day, make sure to join us every Friday night, 7 p.m. on all platforms. Yeah, Matty Hollands, what a player, what a captain. Obviously still involved with town, with town TV and 
the trustee of the the foundation, which is always good as well. But what do you reckon, boys? 314 games. Matt Holland, how many goals did he score? He's got a few crackers during the day. Yeah, as well. What do you reckon? I, I've got I, I've got an answer here. Um, I know I know he scored a fair few from midfield, didn't he? But I was I was looking not too long ago when Connor Chaplin reached his fifty. Uh, how many other players had reached fifty? And I don't I don't recall seeing him, so I don't think he quite got there. But I've got a feeling he probably wasn't a million miles off. So I've gone for forty three. Forty three, Jake. What do you reckon? I've gone lower. A lot lower. Um, I've gone 22. Wow. I've gone significantly oh, lower. Um, I just, well, I bring, you know, that, that it does just about predate me, but I just can't, I can't seem to remember him scoring that many, but, but I might be wrong. Yeah, you, you are wrong. You're very much wrong. Sorry, Jake. You're very, very wrong. Um, Callum is very close. Um, Charlie and Andy in the chat have got 40 and 42. They're close as well. And the correct answer, sorry to say, Callum, you're not bang on, but you're very close. It's 45 goals he scored. Um, obviously, yeah, he you know, scored a few goals in the Premier League. Obviously, this is all competitions as well. But, um, yeah, he had a, it, I think it was sort of spread out, really, Matty Holland with his goal. I think every season he at least scored three or four. Um, but, yeah. 43 goals, so Callum does get the point there, Jake. But hopefully you can pull one back on question two. And it's on another Irishman who, well, he wasn't born in Ireland, but he's, you know, played for Ireland, just like Matty Holland. Um, but yeah, Paul Green is the man. Remember Paul Green? Loney, um, back in the 2013-14 season, I think that was, just before the playoff season. Or maybe, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he's now retired. He's now the a coach at Doncaster Rovers. That isn't the question. But he finished his career at which non-league side? Was it Geisley, Matlock Town or Worksop Town? And a uh, fun little fact, uh, before this final spell, he's actually at Boston United and uh, was the interim manager there. So a uh, little spell was an interim manager. But yeah, he finished his career back in 2022. Obviously now retired. But uh, yeah, Paul Green, uh, of course, was on loan from Leeds. Back then, um, the reason why I've done a question on Paul Green is his birthday uh, was his birthday on Wednesday. So I just thought I'd do a little question on Paul Jason Green for his uh, full name. Played uh, 14 games, two goals, scored in the final game of the season against Sheffield Wednesday. So there we go. But yeah, what do you reckon, boys? Out of these three, Guysley, Matlock Town or Workshop Town? What do you reckon? I'm a big fan of Workshop Town. Wherever that is, <laughs> yeah. um, I've gone Geisley. Geisley. Uh, I've also gone for Geisley uh, for no other reason uh, than I know somebody at university who's a Geisley fan, um, and I have absolutely no inclination either way. So that's what I've gone for. Okay then. Well, you're both wrong because it is Worksop Town. So, uh, so there we go. And uh, Mark Wall and uh, Andy Crackers Cracknell. His head works off as well, so they get the point. So it's still only 1-0 to Callum going into question three. And question three is another midfielder um, who was with the town in the 2010s, and that is Andy Drury. Um, and the reason why I did uh, – I've done a question on Andy Drury is because I did a, a, an article on him on Monday. He's now going to be staying as a manager at this Kent side for the rest – or for next season. He's there currently. But, yeah, which non-league club is he a manager of in Kent? Is it Ashford United, Folkestone, or Sitting Bourne? So, yeah, he's uh, I think he managed Margate as well, I think, briefly as well. So, he, yeah, I think he's a, a Kent lad. So, I think he uh, he's pretty much stayed in Kent. But uh, I think he's a retiree. He's, he's 40. He's 40 now. And I think he, is, he said this is his final season because he was there as a player manager at this club. But now he's the manager and he's going to be there as the permanent manager. Well, I think he's already permanent manager anyway, but he's extended his deal for next season. But um, but yeah, Andy Drury, what do you reckon, boys? Which manager? What? Where? Which Kent side is he managing out of these three? Uh, I'll I'll go first this time. Um, I do read your articles, Ross, but I'll be honest. Um, I I have no recollection of of, <laughs> of remembering what this was. Um, it was Monday. It was Monday. I, I've, I've I've gone down the middle and gone for Folkestone and Victor. 
Okay. Uh, I'm shooting just left of down the middle and I've gone Ashton United. Ashford United, sorry. <laughs> That's not an option, Jake. That's not an option. Because uh, Callum is correct. It is Folkestone. That is 2-0. Uh, Andy Crack. Oh, Andy, you're on the roll, my friend. He's gone Folkestone as well. Charlie and Mark Will gone sitting born. So, uh, yeah, Callum is currently 2-0 up, going to question four. So, um, a chance, Jake. Lucky guess that was. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, question four is on uh, a middle of a road striker, I have to admit. I only had one season in the club. Scored one goal in 23 games. And he also celebrates his birthday this week. And that is Ollie Hawkins. Holly Hawkins, who is uh, now, of course, at Gillingham, who could also play at centre-half. But yeah, he scored one goal in 23 games for town. But who was it against in League One? Was it Burton Albion, Crew, or Rochdale? Um, so yeah, Burton Albion, Crew, Rochdale. I think it was in a win. I think, yeah, I think we did win this game. It's going to quickly find it, the game. Obviously, that was that. Well, I think when Paul Cook came in, that was the season, obviously... When uh, Paul Lambert finally left, and then uh, obviously Paul Cook came in one season. Ollie Hawkins had a spell at Mansfield, then Gillingham. I think we actually got some money for uh, Ollie Hawkins when we went to Mansfield. So that's when, the, of course, the ownership came in, and I think Mark Ashton was able to get a little bit of money for Ollie Hawkins. So, yeah, celebrate his birthday on Monday, Ollie Hawkins. So, yeah, so let me just quickly find this game. So I can just uh, talk about the result. What what do you think of there, boys? What's your thinking at the moment? Who do you reckon it is? So needing the points, I'll go first. I've gone Rochdale, but I, I genuinely got no idea. Those those seasons like all blend into one. <laughs> they do. Uh, I have gone for a different answer. Um, it would have been in the lockdown season, which I, w- I, I would have watched it on iFollow, but all of those games blend into one, don't they? Um, I've gone for somewhat of an educated guess. I, d- I don't seem to remember scoring against Rochdale. I've got a feeling both were nil-nil. And I know Burton, I, I, I was at Burton at home. It was that game where a small number of fans were allowed. And he definitely didn't score in that one. So if, if it's Burton, it would have been the away games. So putting all of that into my mind, I've gone for crew as, as, as the most as the highest probability in my head, at least. Okay. We've got a few uh, answers in the chat. Uh, two people have gone Burton, one's gone Crew. Josh K, I think he's one of your friends, Callum, he's gone for a score of penalty against Rochdale. He's incorrect. So sadly, yeah. Jake, you're incorrect as well. But Callum, you are correct because it was Crew <laughs> at Portman Road on Halloween. He scored the only goal in the 1 0 win uh, in the 62nd minute. So uh, yeah, let's have a little look at the. the he got replaced by Kane Jackson in the 69th. Ke- Keenan Bennett's came off the bench. Which Stephen Ward played in that game, which we'll move on very quickly. Um, but yeah, 3 0 to Callum. And uh, question five. So, Jake, sadly, not going to win, but, um, you know, there's a tiebreaker. You know, Callum made gamble. Well, we could do the final <laughs> question. And um, I'll actually quickly go, who got that answer right in the chat quickly? It's Charlie. Hold on, Charlie. You got it right. Well, well done, my friend. Uh, but yeah, question five is on Matt Clark, who um, obviously will be returning to Portland Road with, with Borough. He's actually doing pretty well with them, actually, in, in defence. And obviously a, a Suffolk boy. And um, I thought I'd do a question on where he was born in Suffolk. Which Suffolk village was he born? Was it Barham, Dedham or Rendlesham? Yeah. Matt Clark. I think he only played like five games or something like that. Obviously was part of the Adam Webster deal. I think maybe Jake will probably do a podcast this time, maybe. When, uh, when maybe yeah. joined. Yeah, we must have we must have been doing it. I can remember Mick McCarthy started bringing him. Or did he start bringing him off the bench in the in the playoff season? He was in and around the squad he was in that season. Yeah. And then I think it must be the season after is when we got Adam Adam Webster. I think so. Yeah. So, yeah. He played. He came off the bench. Yeah, against Millwall. And then Bournemouth. And then, yeah. He actually was on the bench in the... He was an unused sub in the uh, the game against Norwich in the second leg, uh, which which, which we, we lost, obviously. So um, we'll move on. But, uh, but, yeah, five games in total. Uh, I think all off the bench. Actually, did he start against... Uh, he made one start when we lost against Crawley Town in the, Carol, uh, the Capital One Cup back then when we lost 1-0. 
uh, in extra time against Crawley Town. But yeah, <laughs> great memories, great memories. But uh, what do you reckon, then, boys? Uh, I'll I'll go first. Yeah, I've gone for Barham. Barham, okay. Yeah, I've I've used the logic. I know he went to Claydon High School, so I'm going to go with Barham. It's quite quite impressive to have been born in any of those villages. If they got sort of um, you know, labour facilities in Barham, dead dead. My birth, my birth, maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah maybe, but yeah, Barham. I, like I, I'm sure they just probably went to Witchley Hospital, but they probably just put on the. You know, that's where they would like grew up, maybe. Um, obviously, because yeah, I think most people who are like grew up or born in Suffolk, you most lot likely went to Itchridge Hospital. Um, but maybe just to uh, add to your data, but you know, your birth certificate, you just want to put you know where you're from, maybe. But yeah, it is Barham, by the way, and everyone else has gone Barham, so uh, so yeah, but not a nice little fun fact there from you, uh, Jake, that you went to Clayton High School. I don't know, clue, don't know, clue that. So, nice little extra fun fact on uh, Matt Clark there. Uh, is that is that near Claydon and Barham? I, I, I should, I should Look, know my village is more. I don't know. It's like the next village over, basically. Okay. So. I like that. I like that little 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 knowledge now on Suffolk villages like that. Like that. I have to do a bit more more research on my options just to you know just you know to throw you off the scent maybe. Do another closer to Claydon. Oh. Is there any other villages in near Claydon? Uh, Great Blakenham. Oh, um, you know, I was thinking about that. You know. Oh damn yeah. it! Could have could have done that. Could have thrown you off the scent. But there we go. Um, we have got a point though on the board, Jake. But that does mean you have lost though overall. Um, so Callum has won. So well done, I, my friend. Thank but, you. I, I felt like I had a slightly maybe not unfair advantage, but I, I, I did know that one because um, as part of my sort of journalism role that I do for the Middlesbrough game, the away game, I remember look. I remember looking this up because I know he was Suffolk born and it, it just stuck in my head which village it was. So I, I was I was pretty sure I knew that one. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, well played, my friends. Um, as <laughs> always, though, we have got a tiebreaker. Um, are you going to gamble on Jake's opportunity to steal the win? Uh, yes, of course. Um, there'd be no fun without, without, without a gamble. So, uh, yeah, we'll go for it. Okay, love it, love it. So next, uh, tiebreaker time then, Jake. A chance. You have to get it spot on for win, and it is on Borough. Um, how many times have Town beat Borough at Portman Road in 35 games? Um, <laughs> that's a lot of games in total. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of any any like memorable ones. Without, I don't think there, we've actually... there's There's one really memorable one, isn't there? There's the... The J Tab header. Oh yeah, yeah. Somehow, um, yes. Yeah, five foot, whatever. <laughs> Got yeah. scored a header against um, Borough. Teddy um, Bishop and David McGoldrick just seem to keep the ball forever on yeah. the right hand side, and then it gets delivered. Yeah. That's amazing header at the back post. Oh, top man, top man. Good old J Tab, and now a jockey, obviously. Um, Grand National tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Little plug there. Um, there's a few. There's a few actually. There's a few. You know, multiple, there's a four nil win back in 2013. So that's two wins for you. Uh, Tommy Smith scored twice in that game. So yeah, good old Tommy Smith. We will, Tommy Smith scored his first goal in, in Australia today. It would be today. Obviously, they've Australia yeah. and yeah, it was early this morning for us anyway. Um, but yeah, but how many game? How many? How many times did Town beat Borough then at Portland Road in 35 games for? Jake to steal. What I'm going to, I'm going to go seventeen. Ooh, seventeen. Callum, you can still play as well. I've gone for sixteen. So Ooh, sixteen. I'm just going to quickly find the answer. And uh, someone's actually got bang on in the chat. And I don't. I hope you haven't googled this because, of course, you have the advantage, ladies and gentlemen, watching from home. You can have a little Google. Obviously, I'm, I've got my my eyes on Jake and Callum. Although they could easily just like just you know. Be crafty, but I don't think they would. Um, but the correct answer is what Mark said is 21 games, which is not bad going. That's 21 wins in 35 games. So, yeah, seven draws, seven defeats, 66 goals scored, 34 conceded. So, uh, all competitions, obviously, but yeah, not too shabby. Not bad at all. It's a good um, record, that. Very good. Yeah. In my mind, they've always been better than us for some reason. Yeah. But well, they've been a Premier League team, haven't they, for a while it, as well? Yeah, I think that's yeah, that's high, well higher than I thought. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You, you're close, though. You're seven, you went 17. <laughs> so that's yeah. not, not too bad going. But yeah, Callum, you have one, my friends, as always, the champion of the strike. I always want a look, nice little speech from you. So take it away as I get the ready to uh, look ahead to the bar off of the preview. Yeah, well, d- d- delighted to uh, to win. Commiserations to uh, to Jake, of course. Um, but yeah, I felt like a couple of those questions. I mean, the bar and one, I I, I knew which which, and the other the others were mainly lucky guesses. So um, some more educated than others, but generally they were they were guesses. So um, yeah, uh, but but pleased to win uh, one one out of one on the on the strike so i've got a 100 percent record now which uh which i'm pleased about love that good debut my friend but good effort though from jake you know take you to part and uh that's that's what's all that's what it means do you have fun do you have fun yeah i'm glad there was no squad number questions because that's where oh, i yeah. excel squad squad <laughs> numbers was where i was i was hoping you were going to throw a few in but um yeah paul what green what's paul green's squad number uh, <laughs> god no. i'll get I'm going to say 24. 24. What do you reckon, Callum? Let's go 32. You're both wrong. It's 16. But uh, good, good <laughs> as well. Good as well. But, uh, maybe no. not then. No, no, maybe not. But uh, yeah, normally I do do a squad number question. Normally that's what I do do. I don't know. Oh, damn it. Oh, normally a middle one. name one as well. Middle name as well. I was going to do a Joe Garner question. That's um, his birthday this week. And when you mentioned Joe Garner earlier, Jake, I was like, oh, damn it. I should have included Joe Garner. Um and I was going to I do, do his middle I, name. I, I do actually know Joe Garner's middle name, funnily enough. So, um, <laughs> so uh, yeah. What is it? Uh, I think it's Alan. Is it, it is Alan. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's some random knowledge somewhere in there. I like it. I like it. But, I'd like uh, to know what you've forgotten to remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd like to... I'd like to get back, but I've forgotten to know that. Yeah. <laughs> I like it, though. I like it. But, yeah, I'll make sure I'll have a, a squad number question for you next time, Jake. <laughs> Um, for the future strike when you come back on. But there we go. Um, well, Barra then, boys, this weekend at Portland Road. The foundation fixture, of course, for the club, which um, is obviously a special day for them to sort of highlight the great work they do in the community, um, obviously to raise more money. Obviously, last time we had a community or fan- fan- foundation fixture, we won 6-0 and Colin Chapman scored a hat-trick. So it was a, a really good day indeed. And it was actually against Cholton, one, I think it was. And it was against a team in red. So, uh, well... Could it happen again? We shall see. But um, how are you feeling for this one, Callum? Bar obviously, Michael Carrick. It was a bit of a chess game, wasn't it, back at the Riverside? Obviously, what Town won that game 2-0. Um, obviously, they know each other very well. Um, Borough, you know, doing a bit better up since then. You know, they're eight games unbeaten. They're doing pretty well away from home. Made some good signings in January as well. Um, will be a tough game. Yeah, it will be. Um, like you say, they're on a decent run of form. Eight, eight games unbeaten. Um, I don't remember an awful lot from the away game, to be honest. I remember the, the goals, but not not a lot else. Um, but I, I do recall it being quite a professional away performance, which was uh, which was good, um, and hopefully another another result like last year's foundation fixture wouldn't go amiss. I suspect it probably won't be six 0 but um, it it, uh, it would be nice. Um, and, and Connor Chaplin as well as one of the um, trustees uh it was written quite nicely for him last year with with the hat trick um just a one nil and chaplin getting getting one goal tomorrow will uh will do me no it won't won't happen though because it's i don't know <laughs> it was a goalless draw in the week i was about to say well, it's been goal fest at Porton road but we had a, <laughs> a goalless draw with watford um but yeah but yeah jake this will be you know a tough game of course borough well, you know they've still got a chance to get in the playoffs they need to win all their games pretty much to have any opportunity so they're they're as you mentioned earlier they're a team who are going to be here wanting to get a result yeah they're, they're such a weird weird team aren't they because you know you look at them fantastic manager um, you look at the performance last season, you know, I think they'll think over the course of the season last year that they were unlucky not to be playing Premier League football this year. Um, got goals. Latte Laff at the moment is in the form of his life. Um, and he obviously spent quite a bit of money on him. A um, couple of signings in January. Luke Aylin, I guess, is the headline. Probably wouldn't be too worried about someone like him. Hope that doesn't come back to bite me, but mm-hmm. you know, fin- fin as as on mm. you know a, a really good deal to get him from Villa. 
whilst on loan at Plymouth. Um, yeah, they're they're a good side. They're just yeah, they're they're just a weird side because you, like I said earlier, I just I thought they'd be so much higher. They were really poor at the start of the season, weren't they? And then they've sort of had a a goodish middle towards this point, and um, they've got an outside chance, but just, yeah, I'm just they're just quite strange, aren't they? It's sort of really hard to know what what to expect from them tomorrow. Yeah, I think it's going to be one of those chess matches again, though, isn't it, Callum? And uh, I want to quickly ask you, what, what will you do with the team? Obviously, there's four changes in midweek. Um, they've had a, a day or so on the training ground. Um, obviously, George Emerson won't be playing because he's he's rolled his ankle, so he's not going to be available. So Luke Wolfen will be back in in the defence. Uh, will you, you know, keep Harry Clark at, at right back? You know, who, who else would you start in that forward? That forward four, you know, four, you know, front three, and then obviously up front, obviously you know, it's, it's a chance to give Ali Hal a start. I'm going to turn my light on as well, by the way, so I'm getting darker and darker. <laughs> so carry on. Yeah, um, I, I can see the team reverting back to a similar team to what it was last weekend. Um, to be honest, um, obviously Wolfie will, will be back in. Chaplin will be back in. Um, you'd imagine Amari would move back to the right, and, and Jackson drops out. I, th- I, th- I think they'll go with Kiefer again up front. Um, I, I'm, I, I just can't see the trust in Al Hamidi from the start of the minute, which I'm not sure entirely why. I, I'd quite like to see it, but I, I don't think McKenna will do that. If Moore is somewhat fit, then I think he'll start. Um uh, the right back situation you mentioned, um, I think it could go either way. To be honest, um, Harry Clark's been uh, sort of playing with, I think, an Achilles issue for quite a while now. So whether he'll be um, seen as good to go again after Wednesday, maybe not. Could go, could go back to Axel there, um, and then elsewhere. I think I think the rest of the team pretty much picks itself to be honest outside of that okay then uh that's a big talk point though isn't it jake about um <laughs> Ali Hamidi because obviously you know he's become a fan favorite straight away and obviously McKenna came out and said yeah he's he's gonna have to have surgery in the summer because he's pretty much got a bit of an injury um but yeah would you would you like to see him start maybe in, is this a good game from definitely at Portland Road as well so I I actually think tomorrow is the one where we will see him Ooh. um going into this mini break um, I just think the game tomorrow might lend itself more to an Ali ha- Ali Al Hamidi game. I think we might be forced to counter attack probably a bit more than normal. I suspect Middlesbrough will come and try and keep the ball when they when they earn it. Um, so I think tomorrow is is the day we see Al Hamidi from the start. I think, like we said there, I think I expect to see Tuanzebi come back in. I think Wolfenden comes back in. I think Luongo comes back in. Chaplin comes back in. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Sarmiento over Broadhead. He's probably, in terms of kind of, he's probably overdue a start. I know he's not been great from starting, but I just got this feeling tomorrow is the day we see both Al Hamadi and Sarmiento. And I think when you look at that on paper, it, it looks as a very attacking lineup, but I think it's a lineup that would lend itself to. Um, to counter attacking, mm. and of course, a Portland Road. You know, you don't mind that. You, you know, in a way, yes, probably a lineup. You don't mind, you know, attacking lineup away from home. It's like, oh, that's a bit risky. But um, we shall see what the lineup will be. Um, time for predictions, then, boys. Um, I've already asked in the chat. I'm going to bring those up in a second. But um, yeah, Callum, our town, get back to winning ways, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll see some goals. Uh, I'm going to say yes. Uh, I'm going to say two one, two one town. Um... I, I I get Jake's point about Al Hamidi, and I'd I'd like to see Al Hamidi from the start. I've just got a feeling that they'll stick with Kiefer, um, and I'll go for Kiefer to get on the score sheet uh, if that's if that's the case. Um, so yeah, we'll go two one uh, Kiefer and Chaplin Foundation fixture Foundation trustee. We'll go for we'll go for Chaplin to get in the goals again. Oh, I like to see it. I've got um got a prediction here from Mark, who of course got the uh, Middlesbrough. 
uh, game wins, you know, bang on. He's gone a bit of a, he's gone very rogue. He's gone for a win, which is good, but he's gone very rogue with his prediction. He's gone for a 3 2 Ipswich win after a Borough missed penalty in the 94th minute. I don't know if I could take that, boys. I don't know if I could take that. That would be definitely when, you know, they got rewarded a penalty. Obviously, it'd be great scenes, you know, if they missed it. But for us to concede a penalty and then, then obviously, you know, the penalty taken. Like, Mark, let us know. Is it, is it a save? Is it a miss? You know, what happened? Who missed the penalty? You know, you've got to let us know a bit more. But, uh, Jake, what's your prediction for this? I, it's crazy. I, I was going to say 3-2, but probably not. I wasn't going to put in the 94th minute um, <laughs> missed penalty. I think it's a game that reeks of goals. You know, you look the venue is being played at, the two teams that are playing in it. Like I said earlier, Latte Laff is in some silly form for Middlesbrough. Um, so if he's playing, you know, you'd, you'd fancy him to get at least one tomorrow. Um, and I just think the nature of what the day is, I think it'll be quite a fun fixture. And um, just hopefully we come out on the right side of that. Yeah, hopefully indeed. Uh, March gone, it was going to be a save. So Vaz to the rescue once again. But uh, hopefully that's not the case. We don't want that. I've gone also for a 3-2 win, Jake, actually. I've gone for a 3-2 because I think it should be a goal fest. That's not normally that this goal, a, a score a choice. So, um, yeah, goal fest on foundation fixture day. But, um, yeah, we shall see what happens. Well, um, boys, we've gone over the hour mark. It's always good. It's been a great show. 200 people joining us right now. Thanks, everyone, for joining us, sharing your thoughts. But, uh as always, any other business? Anything else you want to mention? Anything you want to plug, Callum? Anything else you want to say? No, I'm just looking forward to getting back to Portland Road, to be honest. Um, Wednesday night was disappointing at the time. In hindsight, in reflection, I'm not hugely down about it. I think, you know, it's still in our hands, that sort of thing. Um, and I think a big win tomorrow going into sort of our own mini international break that we've got after this um i think would 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 do the boys a lot of confidence going into uh hopefully two weeks of uh good work on the training training pitch before a busy last seven days of the season oh i love to see it yeah jake uh, any other business from you my friend yeah after this we've got that two-week break which will feel weird won't it with all the teams <laughs> playing obviously it's good because you know players can recover and stuff but for us as fans we're like thinking oh god it's got that two weeks of no football obviously we'll <laughs> You know, you go off to do, you know, other games and watch other stuff. But, yeah, it's going to be an interesting two weeks. Yeah, I think, it'll, you know, it'd be quite nice um, to sit back and kind of watch the fixtures. I mean, after this, I'm going to stick the Plymouth game on because they're playing one of our yeah. one of our promotion rivals. And, um, yeah, it'd just be quite nice to actually watch the other games. And uh, I, don't, I can never tell if it's a blessing or a curse going into those three games, sort of knowing what we need to do. In some ways, I think that's great, and then in other ways, it it gives me so much anxiety of how we'll perform in those games, knowing knowing what what the results need to be. But um, yeah, but, you know, you just got to embrace the opportunity. We haven't had this in a long, long time, so um, we've got to be grateful for the anxiety in some ways. Yeah, we've not had this well, in our lifetimes, pretty much. Us three here, we have not really. Hmm. Well, we had the the twenty fourteen fifteen season, and obviously the two thousands a little bit. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's been fantastic this season. Hopefully, it continues. Four cup finals to go, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, doing that cliche, and uh, as Jake said, Plymouth Leicester playing right now as we speak. Obviously, you'll probably listen to this, you know, after that game's done and dusters. But come on, Argyle, get a result, hmm. boys. Like to see that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, green, yeah, green army and all that. Of course, it is at home park, so a tough place to go. We've, you know, we've been there many times. Obviously, we got a good result this year. Obviously, in March when uh, Kieran McKenna won Manager of the Month. But uh, there we go. But uh, Callum, Jake, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks everyone for joining the live show as well. Um, as always, shout out to our sponsors, Manscape. Use the code KOA to get uh, twenty percent off and free delivery for all your below the waist, nose, ears, beards, all that stuff. To sort you out, give you that fresh trim, going ready for the summer. Obviously, this uh, the weather is getting a bit warmer. Into I think Portman Road. Hopefully, it'll be a nice day tomorrow. If you go into the game, enjoy. If not, follow the coverage with us as always. And we'll be back for another fan social uh, very soon. Obviously, as I said before, we're live on all platforms every Friday, seven pm. So join us to get involved in the conversation. Um, as always, well, follow us on all our socials at Kings of Anglia on the Twitter, on the Facebook, on the YouTube, on the Instagram, on the TikTok. Also, check out Jake and Callum as well. If you want to hear their thoughts, you know, any other bits and bobs they do. So there we go. Um, thanks again, though, for joining me, Callum and Jake. And we'll be back next time for another podcast. So bye for now. <laughs>